negative feedback can reduce errors due to uh, related to inaccuracy, bandwidth limitation, and nonlinearity. But it cannot; it is not capable of reducing errors caused by noise sources. It is not a technique it would, that can improve or increase the current or voltage drive capability of your amplifier. It is not a technique that can increase the power efficiency of your amplifier. The power efficiency, the nonlinearity, and the noise is completely set in the best case by those properties of your controller. And negative feedback cannot improve it. That's really very important. And we will start showing this for the noise behavior. So we will conclude, of course, that if this is true, then the noise sources of the controllers should be kept as small as possible and deterioration of the signal to noise ratio by the feedback network should be kept small. And we need to find kind of rules for that. So let's study for this the noise behavior of non-energic and passive feedback amplifiers and find rules for low noise design. And for this purpose, we will model the controller as a noisy nuller. It means that all other aspects like bandwidth limitation and, and weak nonlinearity and, and current drive capability are not of interest at this point. We are only interested in the noise behavior and make a model that only models the aspects of interest and the rest can be done at the later stage because we know we can design all things orthogonally. So the noise nuller looks like this. We have a nuller and we have added noise sources because you know already that we need to have two noise sources with a two port uh, to represent the noise behavior for all, term or all port terminations. So we need an IN and a VN. So, and then this is called what we call a noisy nuller, just for the sake of simplicity. So here we have a voltage amplifier. We sense the voltage in parallel and we compare the voltage in series. We have a voltage amplifier with a transformer, which is called a non-energic voltage amplifier. And here we have the noisy nuller as controller. We added the, null, the noise sources to the controller. And the question is, can we find the equivalent input noise sources of the amplifier? So now we have the equivalent input noise sources of the controller. And if the input noise sources of the amplifier, so the voltage and the current noise of the amplifier equal those of the controller, then we may conclude that negative feedback in this case does not deteriorate the signal to noise ratio. So let's do here. The first thing is we are going to redirect this IN via ground. So here you see we let it go over ground and then to this point. And then this one disappears. So what we have is this. Second one is that we are going to transform this noise source to the output of the transformer. And for this, we need this one noise source. This has only two non-zero parameters, uh, transmission one matrix parameters. So it will exactly go to a noise source at the output, which is one over N times the noise source at the input. So then we are there. And now this noise source, you see, is in parallel with a narrator. If it is in parallel with a narrator and we want to bring it to the input of the nuller, then we have to multiply it with A, B, C, D of the nuller, which are all zero. So it means we can forget about this source. And now you see that the equivalent input noise sources of the amplifier are equal to the input equivalent input noise sources of the controller. The feedback network, in this case, the transformer, does not do anything with the signal to noise ratio. Of course, this is an ideal transformer, yes? And this is a property of non-energic feedback amplifier. So you can also prove it if there would be a gyrator, if there are short and open circuits. The class 
of non-energic feedback amplifiers has an important property that the equivalent input noise sources of non-energic feedback amplifiers equals those of their controller. So here's the conclusion. And it cannot be better than the controller, you see? So negative feedback is not improving the signal to noise ratio. It's just, you know, it's, just, it's not deteriorating it in this case. This is different if we look to passive feedback. Let's study the noise performance of a passive feedback voltage amplifier. And here I have a schematic of the passive feedback noise amplifiers, put some colors in it. So you see the blue one is the noise associate, associated with the so signal source. Vs, uh, and the impedance of the signal source and the noise associated with it. The red, in red you see the noise in Nuller. In green you see a, a fee one feedback resistor with its associated noise current. And in uh, the, um, uh, magenta you see the, the, uh, the noise of this resistor. And we are going to study the noise performance and we do this as follows. We will calculate the contribution of each of those sources at the output of the amplifier, then divide it by the gain, and then we have its source referred. That's what we do. Let's start. So the contribution of each noise source to output sense pencil density, multiply it with the reciprocal value of the source to load transfer, and then we have the source referred spectra and then we can talk about if we have everything source referred we can say what is the total source referred noise what was only from the signal source so what will be the noise figure so how much is the deterioration of the signal to noise ratio now here in blue you see the contribution we are going to study the contribution of this one well, this one is just amplified here to the output. You see, it's just like as if it were the signal source. So you have just the output is the amplified version. And since we are talking about volts squared per hertz in spectral density, we are writing, we have to multiply this one, the spectral density of the of VNS with the squared value of the gain. And then we have the output squared, and if we then divide, of course, by the squared value again, then we have source referred, but that, of course it was already source referred, so in this case it's not a big deal. Next one is the equivalent input voltage source of the controller. And you see, it's basically at the same place as the other one. You see, it's, let's say, oh, sorry. It's just the same place as the other one, so the contribution is the same. It is like the same gain to the output, so we have the same type of uh, transfer. And of course, source referred is just added. It is in series with the source. Next one, the current here. The current, I basically do in two steps. You, I could say I split it first in the current here and then study this one. And I split it in the current here and study this one and add them, because they will be correlated, add them. I do it here at once, and I hope you can follow that. Let's see here what, what we have. So the transfer to the output is this current causes a voltage across this one, and it flows through this one. So we have to multiply this one with the voltage gain, and this current we add, this current is like times R, and then we have the output voltage added to the other one. And here you see the two contributions. So. And if we are then dividing it by the, by the gain of the signal, so we have it here, source referred, and here we have the total output referred. This one, well, you see now this side of the nullator, the top side of the nullator is just connected to ground. So this is just flowing. There's no current flowing through R2 if it flows all through R1, which means that the it, the, the, the gain from this current to the output is R1. And here you see, you have to uh, multiply it. And if we then do equivalent input, we have to divide it by the gain. And then you have this contribution. This one, well, it's um, more or less the same, but now the other resistor. 
And then we can combine these two terms. And if you do that, you see, well, maybe you see it quick enough, but if you do it, you can replace this with 4KT times the parallel connection of R1 and R2. And that is very interesting. So, because here in the red one, you also see the parallel connection. So let's study what we see here at the, uh, um, <coughs> at the, the formulas that we see on the sheet here. I'm looking for my mouse. Oh, here I am. Sorry for the... <laughs> so, here, you see the parallel connection of R1 and N2 in series with the source. So this source, in series with this two times the current noise. So it is as if the contribution of the current noise is equal, uh, is, is enlarged by the feedback network. You see, it was only ZS if the feedback network, if it was ideally zero impedance. But now it is the influence, here you see the influence of the feedback network on the contribution of the equivalent input current source. And it tells us that the parallel connection of R1 and R2 should be much smaller than the amplitude, of course, of the source impedance. And then we have low noise. And here we have the same, but here it is about the thermal noise contribution of the, of the amplifier itself. So let's say, I, I don't think I have this on a sheet, so maybe I, I can try to draw it here if uh, that is not so easy to draw this here because we have the eye hand coordination, which is horrible. But let's say we have our amplifier. So we have the, we had our source impedance and a source voltage. And for the noise, I could say, well, it is as if two impedances in parallel are in series with the source. And then I have the controller noise sources. This gives exactly the same result if this is uh, I equivalent and this is V equivalent. This gives us exactly the same result as this whole circuit. Of course, I must add the noise sources of the, uh, of the uh, resistors and the noise sources of this one. But it is, you can say, it is as if the parallel connection of the feedback resistors is in series with the source. That is a very nice conclusion. And I want you to remember this uh, so that we can put it on the next sheet. Oops. So here we have the voltage amplifier. <coughs> the, um, sorry, I have a, a little problem with, uh, with the presentation at the moment. Chris, I'll go back to this. You have to cut it out. I will create a separate uh, blooper video. <laughs> okay. Okay. I should be in again. Yes, I'm in again. Okay, there we go. Here's the voltage amplifier with all the impedances from the feedback network and the source and the load impedance and the equivalent sources. I did not place in this picture the noise of the two impedances uh, of the feedback network. But of course, uh, the sources impedance and the feedback impedances, they all are noisy, yes, or can be noisy. And then you have to add them in the picture. This is for the transient admittance, the noise in the lower and the, the feedback impedance here. This is the trans impedance. And here at the last one, we have the current gain. Now let's now look at the conclusion. 
the noise contribution of the feedback impedances and their influence of the contribution on the equivalent, noise sources can be found for this one as if the feedback elements are together in parallel in series with the source. So also for their own noise that is not drawn in the picture. I remember that we asked it once on the exam last time and some people forgot about the noise when there were resistors here. This one for the trans admittance as if the feedback element is in series with the source. The trans impedance as if the feedback element is in parallel with the source and the current amplifier exactly dual to this one as if the series connection of the feedback impedances is in parallel with the source. So you see, we don't need the amplifier anymore. We can design the noise without knowing anything of the controller. Well, the only thing we need to know is that it will have equivalent input uh, noise sources. And here, in, with these simple diagrams like this, we can find budgets for the equivalent input noise sources. For example, let's say we want to make a voltage amplifier. We have a source impedance of one kilo ohm, and we uh, want to have a noise figure of 3 dB or better. 3 dB means as much noise as, as we had in the source. That means that the parallel, if, if there would be no uh, equivalent voltage in the current noise of the amplifier itself, of the controller, then we could say, oh, okay, the parallel connection can be one kilo ohm. And then uh, that is the showstopper value. If it is larger than one kilo ohm, we will have too much noise. But if we also have equivalent noise sources, noise source uh, V equivalent and I equivalent of the controller, then of course they, sh they also contribute and it cannot be one kilo ohm, it must be less. Well, let's say one kilo ohm, I know from uh, that this is four nanovolts per squared of Hertz. So if the parallel connection would be zero, which is basically not impossible and not possible because then we are shorting the load and we have a power efficiency, which is very, very, very bad. So if this really goes to zero, we have a conflict with the power efficiency probably. But then V equivalent could be four nanovolt per square root of Hertz if there were no I. So you see, all three can have showstopper values. And together, of course, their contributions must be low enough. But it, with this simple diagram, we can already define showstopper values for the parallel connection, for the equivalent voltage source of, uh, of the noise source of the controller that will be in our case an operational amplifier and the equivalent current noise source of the controller. And of course, they cannot be all three together equal to its showstopper. No, they must be much less, but with showstopper values, we can already say, okay, we, we don't need to look further than this every operational amplifier that will have more than four nanovolt per square root of Hertz is already not good enough for our application. And that filters a lot. This is what we are trying to teach you here. So at the beginning of the design, we can really already design the noise behavior in this way that we, are, we can define budgets for parallel connection, for V equivalent and I equivalent of the controller.